Hi and welcome to Nashville Art Makers. My name is Ronnie Chris and today I have the wonderful artist Lori Ann Parker Danley. Hi Ronnie. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Well we're so glad to have you here today and I just wanted to sit down because we have a, you have a big show coming up and mm -hmm. um, you're our featured artist of this month and just wanted to talk to you a little bit and ask you some questions about your artwork. So the, the first question I have and this is sort of based on the title of your show. Sure. Why the Garden of Evolution? Well, the Garden of Evolution, um, one of the inspirations for the Garden of Evolution is an artist named Tetsumi Kudo, okay. who was a, was a Japanese artist who um, had an exhibition of work called the Garden of Metamorphosis. And I really like his work. He works a lot of installation, three-dimensional, but in, also in a very painterly, um, deliquescing, melting kind of way, which is okay. attractive to me. And I just love that title, The Garden of Metamorphosis, because what he deals with is life and death and this constant movement mm -hmm. of things from one thing becoming another. And so that's just the title itself that attracted me. Okay. And then as I started to work on some pieces, I really wanted to work on things that were about evolution, the beauty of evolution, the process of evolution. And the title occurred to me, the Garden of so the Garden Metamorphosis, The Garden of Evolution, sort of as a... Um, saying thank you to Tatsumi Kudo's work, okay. but also to expand upon that, to just think about this idea that we're in this garden, that all of us are in this place where we grow and we transform, and that's what evolution is, this constant transformation mm -hmm. that um, I think there's so much of a negative view of what evolution is, so many people don't understand what evolution is, Okay. and I'm not a scientist, but as an artist, I can talk, this is a way that I can talk about evolution, and kind of get out these ideas, and mm -hmm. deal with the constant motion of life and bodies and the earth, um, the fact that we're in this universe that's 4.5 billion years old, that our bodies are made out of stardust. I mean, this is a really credible, incredible fact, but um, the stardust that's in this arm is different from the stardust that's in this arm in the sense that it came from different stars years and years ago. And I find all that so beautiful mm -hmm. um, and also terrifying because our bodies are vulnerable and fragile. Sure. Um, and that's part of the shifting too. So I kind of wanted to get at all of that. And so the Garden of Evo Evolution is what came to mind. Okay, and let, talk a little bit about the actual mediums that you use in the show sure. uh, to represent uh, your Garden of Evolution. Okay, well what's been interesting is I've started to work on this. Of course I didn't know that I was gonna have this show at the end. One always hopes to have a show or some place to show one's work. Um, but as I started to work, my, the mediums I used also started to evolve that um, my first painting for the Garden of Evolution was oil, which I traditionally have used oil and watercolors. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one was oil and some graphite. And as I kept going, I started to use other things on the canvas too, so to make the canvas more of a three-dimensional space. So one of my works called The Rite of Spring, which the title is inspired by Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. Um, I painted it while listening to The Rite of Spring over and over again, okay. which is something I often do. Um, I started incorporating branches, cicada exoskeletons, because as we all know, it was the year of the, the cicada this past summer. Yes, yes. And I absolutely loved the cicadas. I was one of the rare people that was happy they were here. I thought it was such a wonderful, you could see this microcosm of evolution, mm -hmm. of these creatures coming out of their, their shells, their exoskeletons. Sure. So I collected all these exoskeletons, and I used those on the canvas as well. So to, to show, so here's the evolution of paint, becoming another medium, so paint becoming another thing, like a branch or an exoskeleton. Sure. Okay. So there's this, because I try to use those in a painterly way on the canvas. Gotcha. Now, um, that, does all the works within this show deal with the sort of combination of paint and real organic, you know, things like the exoskeletons and, and whatnot? Mm -hmm. um, is that pretty much the whole, sort of what's going on in that show, or are there other things also going on? There are other things also going on, and then some of the paintings are just paintings. I mean, I don't mean just paintings, but um, I They're did just paint. And right, canvas. I did what the work called for. So there sure. were some times where, when I was starting a work, I might have had this idea that I was going to add something to it, but then as the work progressed, I didn't because I didn't need it. Um, and then the last two pieces that I've created, and this is completely new to me, 
mm -hmm. will be in the show are two assemblages. Okay. And these assemblages incorporate um, sculpted paper, bones, plants, so there's a real three-dimensional quality for them. And so it's me taking off from painting. But again, I'm still using these things, I think, in a painterly way, sure. trying to go after um, movement. One of the biggest things I always try to capture in my work is movement. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the case, and you can kind of tell by looking at the work behind us. But everything I've seen of your work, definitely there is an action that, there's it's just action going on in the work. Thanks. Uh, the way you use the colors and, the, and your lines, um, there's just, there's motion, and it's always sort of, it's very kinetic, you know. And, yeah, thank um, you. Um, what, what would you say, uh, you touched on it a little bit, but like ultimately, like if I was to go on this, in this show mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, or when it opens, excuse me, uh, what are the, the, the main themes? Mm -hmm. Obviously there's the, uh, the, the umbrella of evolution. Right. Um, but just sort of run through really quickly some of the main themes that people can expect to sort of be, uh, you know, impressed mm -hmm. by when they go in. I think the first thing that well, the first thing that came to mind is the fragility of, of bodies, um, the tumultuousness of, of being alive, which is also a, something that opens it up to the beauty of being alive. But being alive is tumultuous. Also, um, going into the interior, looking at bodies in ways that perhaps some people might find a little bit graphic, mm -hmm. um, but I don't necessarily. So I have some of my works have forms and shapes that are broken up. So somebody might see those and think that I've. I'm showing a cut up body and I don't intend, for me it's not morbid, there's a lot of that interiority, what's going on beneath the skin. Mm -hmm. um, the other part of that that's a big influence is, you know, the health issues that I had a few years ago yeah. um, with my two heart it's attacks exactly. and my triple <laughs> bypass. <laughs> and even though my work itself that's in this exhibition is not specifically about hearts, um, having that experience and almost dying turned my work inward in a way that it hadn't been. And I don't mean in the sense that I'm always just constantly trying to like excavate what's going on with me mentally or mm -hmm. use my paintings as a journal or anything like that. I just mean turn me in more inward to the interior of flesh. Um, I like to get, think about things like, you know, we've got our skin, but what's below the skin? Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of skeletal imagery. I happen to find skeletons quite beautiful. Sure. So instead of thinking of them as something morbid, our skeletons are these active things beneath us and they're made of, sure. they're organic and wonderful and moving and so I try to put what you normally wouldn't see in motion, I try to put that into motion in a lot of these works and so that's what I'm hoping that people will see. Yeah, no I agree, um, I think it's, um, you can liken it into the fact if you drive down the road and you see a house being built and right now it's just the wood frames, mm -hmm. there's some time, somewhat, a lot of times there's a beauty in just the way the wood frames are designed yeah. and put together which actually are what's going to hold up the thing that you see right. all the time. You know, and so our skeletons do the same thing. And anytime you look at, it, <clears throat> like, one of our skeletons and completely put together, like, you know, in right. science class <laughs> or whatever, it is pretty mesmerizing. Right. Because you're just like, wow, that's really cool. Um, uh, so kind of sort of going back a little, just a little bit, because you had mentioned uh, the, the health problems that you had run into. Sure. And obviously that affected um, the way that you perceive I guess went about your artwork and mm -hmm. procedure artwork. Um, what were you doing prior to that to where then it shifted to that, just so we have a, a sort of a sure. background? Sure. Um, I think in a lot of ways there was continuity in the sense, of course, I was always always talking, thinking about motion in my paintings. Okay. Always, um, it made sense to me. I used to be a dancer, and so when I first started painting, which was completely random and out of the blue, one night I just had this craving for color and I ran out and bought paints and didn't expect anything interesting to happen at all but I fell in love with it but what made the most sense to me was instead of trying to trust my eyes was if I was looking at a curtain for instance I would ask myself how would it feel to be that curtain how would it feel for that curtain to move and then I was able to paint and that was much more um, a way of thinking about it that was familiar to me as a dancer that you think about things from the inside out. And so I was okay. always after things that you think are still really move. And so all that stayed the same, but I hadn't worked as much on the figure or skeletal imagery sure. or animal imagery. Um, and the animals that I show have in this exhibition, you know, I have a cat, but it's a cat skeleton. Mm -hmm. And one of the things with that, but the cat is very much in motion. It looks like it's about 
you know, ready to pounce, <laughs> um, <laughs> is, a, again, there's something about evolution. You see how different forms relate. So you could have a cat skeleton and parts of a human skeleton, and you see the way that they're, sh they're, fami they're, they're similar. similar. Yeah. And so you see that relationship. And so that's, I guess the main shift would be just where I, I turn inward. I think yeah. it's also made me bolder because I think once that you almost die, you, even if you were bold before, you become more bold because <laughs> everything else pales in comparison. And what does, yeah. what does it matter if you have a canvas and you do things that don't turn out well? It's just a canvas. You move on and you go to another yeah. one. So art is about that space of just throwing yourself out there, doing it. Don't be timid at all. Life is too short, as the cliche, you know, goes. Yeah, sure. But it really is. And so I think it's made me bolder and willing to just try things and just go out and go out on a limb. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on, just from what I know about you personally, mm -hmm. uh, I know you studied philosophy in school. Um, I don't know if you consider yourself a philosopher or not. Um, but if you do, tell us what that <laughs> means. Or um, if not, if you don't consider yourself one, sure. how does that affect your artwork coming from that background? Well, I love philosophy. and My PhD, as you know, is in philosophy. Yeah. I don't know if I would, um, I don't know if I would re recommend that for others if you're looking for a, like, what kind of job that will necessarily lead to, yeah, but yeah. on the other sense, I think philosophy is invaluable. Uh -huh. um, and I think that so much of my work, I mean, all of my work is definitely hooked up to my philosophical ideas. Uh -huh. um, and interestingly, my work as a graduate student was always about phenomenology, what it means to be a body in the world, what it means to be a fragile body in the world. And I was asking these questions before I got sick. Yeah. So I think that prepared me for dealing with my sickness. Sure. Um, and then it's also just constantly fed back into my art. So I think of it, I think of it as an, um, a dialectic. So there's my art, there's the philosophy, they go back and forth. Um, and I don't even know if there's always a line between the two. Mm -hmm. They just sort of, um, they help each other, they help each other sort of in ways that you can't right. really uh, grasp sometimes. But obviously the, the philosophy part helps build your worldview. Mm -hmm. And your worldview will always build into what your art right, is. Right, right. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's definitely, I can see that for sure. And I can see it in your work um, pretty clearly. Uh, what goals <laughs> does Laurieann have as an artist now moving forward into the future? You know, I, I do get to make art. Yeah. So that's a gift. I get to do it often. Um, so continuing to do that, of course, I'd love to do it more because, you know, time is short. But also being able to share artistic moments with other people, aesthetic mm -hmm. moments, is that's, that's my goal, if I'm able to continue sharing those. And also, using my art, even when it's not directly about my heart, mm -hmm. using it as a way to also speak about heart disease in women okay. is something that I've been trying to do. In my show, The Twist, etc., I'm donating 10% of artist proceeds to the American Heart Association's oh, nice. Go Red for Women movement. And so my art is a way that if I can just use as a platform to get the idea out that women who you'd never expect can have heart attacks, then that's something else I want to keep doing with yes. my art. Yes, well, that's very good. Um, my last question. Sure. It's been a lot of fun. This has been great. Um, this is sort of a three-part question, and this is just supposed <laughs> to be fun. Okay. 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 Because you're, you know, you have the philosophy background. Okay. And we'll let when you answer this question, we'll let the folks at home uh, <laughs> philosophize over it. Okay. Okay. Um, one word. We're gonna do three things. One okay. word that just one word <laughs> that describes Lori Ann. Curious. One word that describes your artwork. Motion. And one word that describes life. Transformation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much for sitting Thank down you. with us. Thank you. This has uh, been great. Yes, it was a lot of fun. Everybody. Please make sure you check out Lorraine's show at the... At Twist Etc. opening February 4th and come to the Art Crawl at 6 to 9 p.m. in the downtown arcade and say hello. She's prepared. <laughs> Thanks again Thanks. for checking us out and we'll see you next time. All right, bye. Whoa. Bye.